Hi, welcome back to CVN305. Today uh, we are actually going to study something about torsion. The reason why I have uh, this kind of a screen as opposed to my usual stuff is because I want to do an experiment. Uh, and when I say I, I mean you. You know what? You know how that works, right? So what I want you to do before you start this segment, I need you to go. I need you to look at the list of items that you want that I want you to to bring uh, and watch my video. So the first thing you need is a marker pen like that. Okay, something. Any I mean you can you can use any pen. You need a piece of paper. Right? Just a you know eight, eight and a half by eleven, that kind of stuff. You need a uh, you, you need a pair of scissors and you need some cello tape, duct tape, whatever. I am using this scotch tape, something like that. Okay, so the list is pen. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one more thing, which is a ruler. So those are the pieces that you want. You can get any kind of straight edge. I'm going to use this as my straight edge. I just want to be able to draw some lines, okay? So you can pick any straight edge you want. So straight edge, pen, pair of scissors, paper, and um, some duct tape. Okay, or some kind of tape, cello tape, something like that. Okay, so go get that, come back, pause this thing, go get that, come back, and we'll talk again. Okay, great. Okay, so you got all the pieces. Okay, today we are going to study torsion. The way it works is the following I'm going to get back my pool noodle bit so that you can see what it looks like. So I got my usual pool noodle with. Can you see the two pens, two, the two pens marked and a line marked? So, idea of torsion is what is called axial twist. I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to twist one side clockwise and the other, other side is counterclockwise. So, I'm going to twist it like that. Okay. So, what happens is, is it obvious to you that what used to be a straight? So, let's, let's see. There you go. Can you see the two, two the two pencils are kind of aligned almost, right? And the line joining the two pencils. Can you see the two line the line joining the two pencils? Now what happens is when I twist it, the two pencils make an angle. What used to be a straight line is now like a V. The angle of the V is called the twist. And what I want you to see is that is it obvious to you that what used to be a straight line? Is now not a straight line, it's a curved line, it's actually a helical line. It's a helix, that is, it goes around this thing like a spiral. Okay, so is that obvious to you? There, you can see the spiral very clearly. Our task is to find out how the torque that you apply is related to the angle of twist because that's the real result that we want from our material analysis. And for this, we are going to do an experiment. Okay, so first thing I need you to do is take a piece of paper like that. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry, draw a straight line and a slant line on that. So I'll show you the lines, then you can pause it and you can do it yourself. So I'm going to draw a straight line. So I'm going to take my straight edge. Wait for me to draw it and then you can draw it yourself. So I'm going to draw a line that looks straight like that and then I'm going to draw a slant line. I want to make a fairly steep angle so I'll show you what the two lines look like. So like that. So what I want you to do is draw a straight line and a slant line. Okay. The straight line represents what happened to this thing before. The slant line represents what happens to this thing afterwards? So I take this, when I twist it, the straight line becomes kind of slanted, right? So I want to do that. And now what I want to do is to take the two ends and I am going to glue them like this, right? That thing, that's why I need the, uh, the, the, the scotch tape. And I'm going to glue it in a few places. You can glue it in as many places as you like, but make it into a tube. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try and do. So you can pause, make that into a tube, come back, and then we can continue. Okay, so meanwhile, let me do this thing.
and make sure that the lines are on the outside of the tube. Don't make it on the inside of the tube, make it on the outside of the tube. Like so. You see that? I just made a very simple glued mark. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, first thing I want you to notice is that the slant line became a helix. Can you see that? Can you see the slant line becoming a helix? So what I am going to do is, I am now going to cut it along the slant line. So I am going to cut it along this helix, like that. So cut it, I am going to do it right there on the, on the screen. I want you to do it with me. So take it and cut it along the screen, like that. Open it and what I want you to see is that I get a parallelogram. Can you see the parallelogram? Right? So the question is, if I take a thin tube, so right now it's a thick tube because that's all I can get, but the paper gives you a thin tube. So if I take a thin tube and I twist it, so imagine if I took this thin tube and cut it along this line, right? What will happen is I'll get a rectangle. Agree? So if I take the same tube, I twist it and cut along the twisted line. What happens? The rectangle has become a parallelogram. That's this, this shape. Can you see that? I twisted it and when I cut it, it became a parallelogram. So what kind of deformation takes a rectangular rectangle into a parallelogram? Remember, it's shear. So what I want you to learn is that torsion is like taking a sheet of paper, shearing it and wrapping it back. So I'll show you when I wrap it back, it will completely close back into my original shape. Can you see that? Along the cut shape. See? So what it is, is that Torsion is the same as taking a rectangular sheet, shearing it like this and wrapping it back. So you realize that in order for me to have shear strain, I need to have shear stress, right? So what I'm going to do, is it obvious to you where I need the shear stress? So imagine the bottom is fixed and I want to shear it. So let me do it this way. There. The bottom is fixed. I'm going to shear it this way right so what do i need i need shear stresses on top correspondingly there will be shear stresses on bottom right this is what we call tau yx this is the y phase and i want to apply shear stresses along the x direction so tau yx tau yx has to be there but that's not enough if i only had tau yx tau yx then what will happen is i will get a net torque and this whole thing will start spinning that obvious to you? So not only do I need tau yx, tau yx, I need tau xy, tau xy. You know, we did this before, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw arrows that show tau yx, tau yx. I, I will draw it. After you see it, I want you to draw it on your sheet of paper. Okay, so I'm going to draw these arrows. So So I'm drawing these arrows. When I finish drawing it, you can take a look. So my first set of arrows look like this. Can you see? Right? If I, of course, if I, you can even see it, if you, if you drew it this way, that's fine too. Right? I happen to have drawn it this way, so you can take a look at it. Right? 
but that's not enough because you can see the bottom is going down the top is going up the whole thing is going to turn this way right what I really want is for those two things to be cancelled out so I'm going to have tau xy tau xy so I'm going to draw those four things which look like this Can you see how the entire border is decorated? I also want you to see the direction of the arrows. Can you see that? The arrows actually meet together like that. So what happens is the top and bottom arrows tend to rotate it this way. The two side arrows will tend to rotate it this way. So the net rotation will be zero. Right? So what happens is now I am going to wrap it around and connect them back. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to wrap it like this and I'm going to, this is a tricky operation. So you have to do, you have to do a little bit of smart gluing. So I want you to try it. So what I want you to do is make it back into a circle. This is kind of, I mean, make it back into a tube. This is a little bit tricky, but this is what you need to do. This is the essential step. I am actually trying to get that tube worked out properly. So I'm making a whole bunch of, oops. Well, I glued this thing. Oh, there you go. Excellent. So, I am making a bunch of these. So, I am going to take it and this is a little bit tricky to wrap. So, I want you to see that I am going to make it into a tube. This takes a little bit of effort, but I really want you to do it. Okay. I want you to see there, there is a tube, right? So, I want you to glue it that way and that takes a little bit of planning. It's not a simple thing to glue it that way, but I'm going to try and see if I can do it. This is the trickiest operation in this whole thing. So if you do it right, it will look very nice. If you don't, it will be a little bit messy, but I want to make sure you get it into a cylinder. Don't glue it in some random way. Make sure that the edges line up. There. That's reasonable enough. There. Did you see that? Well, it's kind of like a tube, right? But the most important thing I want you to see is that what happened to the slant sides? Can you see that the stresses kind of cancelled out? The two slant sides, the arrows are actually lining up. And the, there are down arrows and up arrows and they will cancel out. Look at the top. Can you see that there is an arrow going around in a circle? And each arrow is a little bit of stress. Can you see that? So what is happening is the top is getting rotated. Look at the bottom. The bottom is as arrows on the other side. The bottom is getting twisted this way. The top is getting twisted that way. That's how torsion works. So if you take a thin tube and you twist it, it is equivalent to having a rectangle, shearing it and then joining the ends. So torsion is locally looks like a shear. If you remember this, the rest of the stuff is fairly easy. The rest of the stuff is about calculation and we will go, we will go to that next. Okay. Thanks. Bye.